like they say, it's supposed to favor the underdog. How about CJ Baxter on this one? There's no way. Actually, there is. He is that guy. 30, 20. Someone's coming for him. Nobody's going to get him. Touchdown. Second playoff win. He had his chance to walk away a winner. But Mr. Brady wanted to win twice. And guess what happens? You lose your wife. And watch this. He slows down here just to make him miss as well. Gives him the stiffy of all. And kill seven seconds. But a flag's on the field. The ball's loose. And it's going back the other way. It was picked up and it's taken in by DJ Hardy. Game over. North side calls it. Live from Orlando, Florida, you're listening to the sports scene with Jesse O. Oh, party all night long and call me Morgan. Yep, it's me, Jesse O. Welcome everyone to the sports scene on iHeartRadio, iHeartRadio podcast and YouTube presented by First Bet and Sports Fluent Media. We've got a great show for you. Our special guest is a great friend of the show. She's a sideline reporter in our ESPN world and definitely my favorite person to argue with. Madison Little joins the show in about 15 minutes. You want to stay tuned for that one. It was a great interview. We had a lot of fun. But first, please welcome back our dynamic duo of Rocky and Bullwinkle. We'll let you figure out who that wide-eyed squirrel is. By that, you know I'm talking about my favorite color analyst and yours, Mr. Alvin Delvey. And you know who else is here. That's right, the resident couch correspondent Max Ronquillo is back. And he won't have to guess any college mascots this time. Don't worry, everyone. So glad to have you both with me. And before we get into our top five sports stories for the week... You know, I have one question for you. Max, where were fortune cookies invented? San Francisco. Maxwell, you are correct. The first right one in a while. <laughs> this guy's on fire today. <laughs> Let's go. Dang. <laughs> wow. Holy mackerel. I actually I think I've been to, I think I've been to the original place. That's the really? only reason why. Yeah, it's in Chinatown. And so I just couldn't remember where it was. Yeah, but I, I know is. I've been there. Yeah, you, they East. were invented by a Japanese man, Makoto Hagiwara, in 1914 in San Francisco. Max, I am so impressed with you right now. You're going hey, hey, to be on a roll today, <laughs> aren't you? You guys suck. I'm the Bro, best. Alvin, Alvin, you better run <laughs> I'm, for the I'm hill. amazing. Dude. <laughs> I'm so cool. That's wild, mate. That's wild. Alvin, you better start running for the hills because this guy's coming for you in this episode. All right. Let's get into our top five sports stories. We're going to start with number five. Let's go into some golf. The Masters are here, gentlemen. You know, the biggest golf tournament in the year where Jim Nance welcomes us with his sweet voice that says, hello, friends, in a saying that echoes around the globe. Except golf viewership is declining due to a lack of star power and that rift between the PGA Tour and the new live golf circuit. The PGA Tour's ratings have been dropping significantly with tournaments like the Phoenix Open and the Players' Championship. The Live Golf offers big money to players, but hasn't attracted many viewers yet. While some golfers like Pete Malnati believe fans just want to see great competition, others acknowledge the lack of dominant player like Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods. This week's Masters will likely have some better ratings than the last two because all the best golfers are there, but it remains to be seen how much the PGA Live conflict is hurting viewership in the long run. We're going to find that out. Very soon here. Also, Connor Delaney, our iHeartRadio golf analyst, will be joining the show in a couple weeks to break down the Masters. And he tweeted out his takes. If you guys want to go and look at his takes, last year he was 0 for 10 with his takes. Then Max and I came on and clowned him. This year, we're just licking at our chops to see if he's another 0 for 10. Anyways, let's get into our number four sports story. The Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Rishi Rice turned himself in after facing charges for a hit-and-run crash in Dallas. He was released on $40,000 bond. By the way, I was in Dallas for the solar eclipse. Absolutely magnificent. Everyone should go see a total solar eclipse in their lifetime. It was 100% breathtaking. But back to uh, Rishi Rice and the charges on him include aggravated assault. Wow, that was a weird transition, Jesse. The charges on him include aggravated assault, which could lead up to 20 years in prison and several counts of causing injury in a collision. The crash involved another vehicle driven by former teammate Teddy Knox, who also faces the same charges. The NFL is monitoring the case and could be potentially liable for discipline of Rice. So 
we'll see if something comes about from that. By the way, also heard this the other day. Let's say one day there's a situation, right? Maybe it's the 49ers, maybe, you know, head into the playoffs, offense is great. Patriots, somebody, could be somebody, somebody, Raiders look, could be, you never know. God forbid somebody goes down, would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're gonna let me if I become an owner in the NFL team, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know, I'm always gonna be in good shape, always be able to throw the ball, so. To come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back. Um, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. What do you have to say about that, Max? Yeah, I called it. Oh yeah, you kind of did. May, may, I, t I said that he wants to end it as a champion. I think he did. That's what I have to yeah. say. It's yeah. not a lose twice, lose your wife, lose three times if you come back to the league. Mate, listen, there's a lot of words I can say about her. Starts with an A, starts with an S. Not going to finish those ones, <laughs> but he doesn't need her. So, and he needs championships. Respect. I haven't asked you about Tom Brady in a while, so I felt like I should ask you about that. All right, Max, our number three sports story is again for you. The Los Angeles Dodgers star Shohei Otani's former interpreter, Ipe Mizuhara, has been accused of stealing $16 million from Otani to pay off gambling debts. The federal complaint alleges that Mizuhara, a compulsive gambler, secretly made 19,000 bets totaling hundreds of millions of dollars over a three-year period and lost roughly $40 million to cover the gambling losses. Mizuhara allegedly impersonated Otani to gain access to his bank account and transferred the money to himself. Otani, who was completely unaware of Mizuhara's gambling problem, is considered a victim in the case according to what the FBI just published. The investigation revealed that Mizuhara meticulously concealed his gambling activities from Otani and even told others that Otani was aware of and had helped pay off his debts. Mizuhara is expected to appear in court for a bond hearing and faces bank fraud charges, which carries a maximum sentence of 30 years. Max, what do you think? Yeah, I appreciate the question, but I'm going to take a, a page out of the MLB playbook and just talk about the MLB right now, because there's a lot of other exciting things out there. So okay. some of, the, of course. There, there's, there, there's a few key people, players, teams that I think are super exciting. Right now we have Jackson Holiday coming up. MLB debut, absolute dog for the you know, Baltimore Buster, Orioles. For the Orioles, and hey, one of my um, people in my fantasy football league, he's a development coach in the minor leagues for the Orioles. So let me see if I can get him on. Let me see if we can get any Jackson Ooh. Holiday, some other T, because they might win 100 games again this year. Um, with now him included, I mean, what is he like? 18, 19, whatever years old, Buster O'Neill or whatever his name is. Some analyst back in the day called him in 2014, saying that this guy's going to be an all-star. He was probably like 10 years old. But that just shows you that this mate's swing is really going to take it to the MLB and be an absolute dog. Another player that's actually pretty interesting, Bobby Wood Jr. of the Royals. Signed a massive mega deal. And yep. now he's the Royals are looking like they could be a top contender in the Central. And it hasn't been like that for a while. Um, he's, Since they won the World Series. Games, multiple homers in a game, batting like 360. Playing shortstop like an absolute whiz. It's going to be awesome to see that him play. The top of the Dodgers rotation right now is extremely electric. First of all, the umpires. It's either they're so nasty, or the umpires are just getting like they're just getting tricked by their off speed and fastballs and whatnot, or they just want the Dodgers to win the World Series because the strike zone for Yamamoto and Glass now is insane. I mean, Glassnow's breaking records, personal records for himself. Yamamoto's an absolute dog. It's going to be insane to see what happens with that pitching staff if they stay healthy. But my favorite player, Fernando Tatis Jr., is the, the top 90th percentile in, in arm strength, hard contact, speed, everything. 99th percentile in arm strength. And he went from shortstop to right field, and now he's going to be Potentially MVP, potentially I'm for sure All Star, um, Gold Glove, and the Padres might be back. NL West is going to be nasty. If the Giants kind of turn around, it might be an interesting little story to see. Except the Dodgers will win like 130 games, so you know they're they're, yeah. they're all fighting for second place. But the second place will be interesting as well. Um, yeah, because yeah. then we'll get in the wild card game. I'm cool with that as long as we can win. You know, yeah, that's Anything that's that's what I care about.
So you're not going to say anything about the, uh, the state of the ML- situation? I mean, what is there to say? I've said it before. We're not going to hear anything to the end of the year. You can't just steal $16 million without noticing. It's not like he was, Shohei Zotani was making $50 million a year. He, he knew what he was making. So baseball's exciting. MLB wants to talk about that. I want to talk about that. And somehow my algorithm has given me Dodgers Twitter now randomly, and it's like all the people defending Shohei of like, the FBI cleared him, so he's got to be innocent. All these people, I mean, obviously accusing Giants fans of essentially rigging this whole thing. But, all right, you, you made $183 million losing bets. You won $142 million. So you're shorted $40 million in losses, essentially. No bookie in the world is taking those bets unless they know it's Otani. You can't bet that much money. Ipe is literally going to be the most legendary fall guy of all time. I just really hope his payoff is. Yeah, he's a sacrificial crazy. lamb. I sa- yeah, yeah, we said that we said that a few weeks ago. Yeah. That's a whole thing. And mate, are you going to generate over 10 billion dollars in the next 10 years? Not currently. No way. Shohei will. And so money talks. Yeah. And he's going to be fine. That's what America needs. America yep. needs Babe Ruth. Let's get into our number 2 sports story. Some NFL news again kind of This is an interesting one. O.J. Simpson, a legendary football player whose career was overshadowed by his infamous murder trial, died at the age of 76. Simpson was a college star at USC and became the first NFL player to rush for 2,000 yards in a season. He was a charismatic personality who transcended sports with endorsements and acting roles. However, His legacy is forever tied to the 1994 murders of his ex-wife and her friend, but was later acquitted, but was found liable in a civil case. And he was also imprisoned for a separate robbery in 2008. Despite the accomplishments on the field, O.J. Simpson's death will likely reignite discussions about his controversial life and trial. So, Max, your thoughts on O.J. Simpson? I mean, yeah, it's what I said with Shohei before. Yeah, I mean... You're in Hollywood, and they, they, I guess they force you to, to do something. You off off someone, see ya, sacrifice oh, someone. Gee. And that's probably what happened. And then guess what? You do that, and then you get paid. Why was he in all these commercials afterwards? Why was he making all this money? And so, I mean, if you just want to call it what it is, how can we let a guy who killed someone be on an orange juice commercial just right afterwards? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like... Like, that's just what it is. Yeah. I mean, who got in trouble for that death? Did anyone get in trouble? Someone died. Someone got murdered, and no one got in trouble. Is that what happened? Like someone pulled. I don't know. I'm asking questions, and so I don't know. The, that's where the buck stops. It's like, hey, someone died. Go r- remote orange juice. Okay, great. So yeah, there you go. Have a nice life, but you're dead. Okay. Well, <laughs> no. Go to our number one sports story. Max, what kind of car does an egg drive? A carton. That's great. Yes, no. It drives a Yolks wagon. Mm. Doesn't seem like that'd be the luxury kind of car <laughs> you would want. Sorry. What about Massive Bugatti? Little... Oh, never mind. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say little... Bugatti, but bu- Bugatti. Bugatti. <laughs> All right, there goes his last brain cell. Was holding. And welcome back to the sports scene, everyone. For our second segment, we are joined by our favorite ESPN sideline reporter, a very good friend of the show, one that we always welcome back on, Madison Little returns to the sports scene. Madison, good to see you. Thanks so much for coming back on. Happy yeah. end of March Madness. How are you doing? It's been a while. It's been a long time. I'm good. I'm excited to talk March Madness with you. Yeah, we're talking March Madness. We're talking a lot of other things. This will be a very interesting inside to our lives and how we sort of see the sports world and the sports scene. Let's start off with the women's side because it was just the more interesting one because the epic moment has come and gone in women's college basketball. And before anyone thinks about what happens next, we're going to savor what we just witnessed this year. So South Carolina is securely in the history books with one of the most stunning reloading jobs I've ever seen. The Gamecocks 
go 36-1 and one last year, lose all five starters, then return with a flawless 38-0 run and a national championship, the final bow on the package of an 87-75 win over Iowa on Sunday. The South Carolina Unstoppables, one must stand back and look at the numbers to fully appreciate the dominance of Don Staley's program, 38-0. and and three national championships in the past seven years, Madison. It's crazy. That's wild, right? Like, Don Staley, crazy. The, she's got to be one of the goats now. Do you think she's one of the goats? Yeah, I definitely think that she's up there in the conversation. The goat, maybe not yet. Um, but what she did was incredible. I think that, like, from the outside looking in, you didn't expect her to be able to do that after losing the pieces she lost at the end of last season. But, I mean, she's... She did it. You can't say she didn't do it. They, nobody was able to beat them. They're clearly the best women's basketball team in the country right now. And I I don't know. I'm I'm interested to see what she does next season. That's kind of... I know we're savoring this last season because it was incredible. But, like, I think the GOAT does it next season, too. Yeah. And specifically, I mean, I would call her the GOAT, but Tara Vanderveer just retired. And as you're kind of looking at Vanderveer's you know, resume for basketball, right? She's got the most wins of any coach of all time. She's already gotten three national championships. She coached Don Staley when Don Staley played for Team USA and they won the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. So she's got a gold medal as well. Mm -hmm. Tara Vanderveer also has won like what, 12 or 13 Pac-12 championships, made quite a few Final Four runs. She's got to be up there in the history books, right? Sorry, yeah. that's not even related to March Madness, but just <laughs> Tara Vanderveer. Pac-12, you know, dying as it is. We but, know you're biased to the Pac-12. Yeah. It's okay. Well, now I'm biased to the ACC. Fun fact. Okay. okay. Go ACC. Wait, no, South right. Carolina's not there in the SEC. Who's going to be my team of choice? I, we're going to have to figure this one out at a different time, Once Jesse. Cal loses inevitably. Sorry. Anyways, <laughs> sorry. Side note, Tara Vanderveer retired. I just wanted <clears> to bring that up. But South Carolina Madison went 109-3 and the last That's three seasons. That's insane. With only defeats by one point, two points, and four points. Their depth was one thing I was kind of thinking about when I was looking over this year versus their last year roster, mm -hmm. right? Their difference in bench points this year was incredible. They were 222 to 36, outscoring other teams mm -hmm. from the bench so far yeah. in March Madness. That is crazy. And on Sunday against Iowa, it was 37 to zero. It makes you wonder what Dawn Staley's recruiting journey looks like because she lost four big pieces. She replaced her starters and stacked her bench to where they outscored Iowa, like you just said, 37-0 in the national championship. So that recruiting journey of Dawn Staley's was an, like a great one. I mean, where where did she go? Where did she find these players? I She better not give up her secrets because that's insane. Yeah, and the thing the year before that they were kind of struggling with was shooting from the outside. Then, you know, Raven Johnson loses 30 pounds. They bring in Malaysia Fulwiley, who can shoot the three very well and efficiently. They retooled around the arc as well, while having Camila Cardoso, who's going to leap to the NBA draft or the WNBA draft inside to just destroy people at six foot seven. It was pretty much like you couldn't stop her. She was unstoppable. Anyways, mm -hmm. let's talk about her. Caitlin Clark, she's headed to the WNBA draft. And she leaves behind broken attendance marks and mm -hmm. shattering TV ratings records. Also, very different horizons for women's basketball. Her final record haul, 3,951 career points after 30 on Sunday. A gazillion autograph pictures and posters and shirts out there in the 12-year-old bedrooms in America. And two national runner-up finishes. She's, yeah, she's this personified greatness. She changed the landscape of women's college basketball for sure. I think women's basketball in general for sure. I mean, speaking of attendance record, they've already moved the site of her first WNBA game because she's expected to draw such a big crowd. And I don't think that's ever been done for anyone at any level ever, maybe like in any sport. So I just think the landscape that she's bringing with her to this next level, it's not only going to be good for women's college basketball, but it's going to bring a new spotlight to the WNBA. And like you said, those 12 year old girls with those posters in their bedrooms, like you love to see it. I don't think there's ever been someone that has catered to this young population, a future female athletes, future female 
sideline reporters, future female, anything. Like she's just been such an inspiration to these young women. But Jesse, I have to ask you the question. Do you think that she can be considered one of the goats not having won a national championship in her collegiate career? I hate you. I was literally <laughs> going to ask you that question next. Do I consider her one of the goats? Yeah. I mean, there are still a lot of good, you know, players, both met, male and female um, mm -hmm. in March Madness that have not won a championship. Like, look at the legend of Stephen Curry. He only got better once he went to the NBA, right? His Davidson team made one heck of a run. And before him, we hadn't really heard of Davidson, right? Iowa yeah. was this kind of floundering program before she got there. She's one of the top five recruits behind Paige Beckers, Camila Cardoso, Angel Reese, and that whole 2020 class. Mm -hmm. And she makes Iowa nationally relevant again. And not just nationally relevant, she takes them, a program that literally only had won like 10 games the year before she got there. She's brought them now back to back years to the national championship. Yeah. So I, I think, think a complete turnaround like that was something to be, you know, mentioned. And also like, I don't even know if we would have heard who Lisa Bluter is until like Caitlin Clark, right? Do you, would you agree with that? No, I agree. I definitely couldn't have told you the Iowa woman, women's basketball coach prior to this season. Yeah. I think that I agree with you with the fact that she needs to be in the GOAT conversation um, regardless of winning a national championship. And I know so many people disagree. And I was, I was kind of expecting you to disagree to a, to an extent, mm -hmm. um, but you can't ignore, you can't ignore what she's done. I mean, she holds the points record. She's like, she's just an all around player. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think there was anyone. I mean, I still think that if you're looking at players in general, I think that Paige Beckers is up there in terms of like talent this last season. Um, Top two. I have been known to argue that she's better than Caitlin Clark as an all-around player. I would but agree. her career's her her career's not over, so we can't necessarily look at her in that conversation yet. But like right now, yeah, Caitlin Clark's up there. I mean, what she did on the court was incredible, but what she did off the court is even more incredible, and I think that's goat worthy of itself. Yeah, I mean, if I was thinking about it, the goats of college basketball, right? Sue Bird played for UConn with a stacked team. Diana Taurasi played on UConn with a stacked team. Brianna Stewart did win four national championships in a row. Played on a UConn team that was stacked. Mm -hmm. None of the other players from Iowa are going to get drafted in the, to the WNBA. They're yeah, not. I it's think... literally just Caitlin Clark. Like Kate Martin yeah. maybe has a good shot of signing as a free agent, but she might go and play abroad because she could probably make more money going mm -hmm. abroad. So if I really think about the WNBA draft class, like, UConn always has, you know, two or three players that are going to go to the WNBA draft. Iowa just has Caitlin Clark. Yeah, and I think, I think speaking of the Paige Beckers, Caitlin Clark, um, kind of going head to head, my biggest argument there was like Iowa did only have Caitlin Clark. Yeah. So obviously most of their offense is going to go through her, which kind of in a sense racks up those points um, inevitably. You know, I mean, she – she contributed in other ways too, and other players contributed to a to a point. But I think that's a big part of her success. But I'm not going to let that tarnish it in my mind. I, I still think that she's she's great. But I don't know if her points would have been as as high if she was on the UConn team. Um, but I, I don't know my my opinion about whether or not she's in the goat conversation stands. But there's definitely I don't know. There's like almost like an asterisk by it for me, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I still think like Lisa Leslie, when she was at USC back in the late nineties was kind of a dog. Um, and that's why like every award is named after her pretty much like Cameron Brink just won the Lisa Leslie award for the nation's best center. By the way, Aaliyah Edwards on you or on UConn is mm -hmm. going to get drafted and she's going to be a top four pick. So just yeah. throwing that out there, like Paige Beckers did have like the second best, center in all of women's college basketball behind either Cameron Brink or Carmela Cardoso, depending on how you look at Cardoso and Edwards and what they carry to a team like Edwards can shoot the ball a little bit more. Cardoso is just a ground and pound inside, um, sits in the dunker and just goes up strong. So my final question for you in this segment now is by Caitlin Clark going to the WNBA, do you think people are going to be a little less interested next year? in women's college basketball. I asked um, this question a couple weeks ago to Alvin and Max on our show, and I wanted to get your opinion on this. 
Um, I don't know. I think that I think there'll definitely be a drop in viewership, but I don't know if it. I think that what she did will ultimately have a lasting impact because I see her a year from now advocating for the women's national championship. I think that she is going to use her platform to speak about it and be kind of a spokesperson for the college women's college basketball scene. So I still think she's going to have an impact in it somehow. I don't know if we'll see a storyline as great as hers. So I don't know if that's going to draw the same viewership, but I, I think, I think it'll be less viewership, but still more than it has been in the past. If that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Actually, I do have one more question for you. Okay. Who takes over as her heir apparent in women's college basketball? Is it Juju Watkins? Is it Paige Beckers? Like, who's your early pick right now? Because apparently you're so good at knowing March Madness stuff. I am. I beat you, just to put that on record, um, in our bracket. Anyway. I like one um, game. That's all right. A win's a win. Anyway, um, I've been such a big advocate. destroy you next year, by <laughs> yeah, the way. We'll Okay. I've been such a big advocate for Paige Beckers, and I would love to say that it's going to be her. But Juju Watkins, I mean, she's she's been incredible, um, and I think that she's going to be she's going to be a superstar next year for sure. Paige Beck. Okay, actually, I actually have one more question now. I Sorry. Figured. So, <laughs> so Paige Beckers obviously is going to be pretty much a lock for the number one pick in the WNBA draft coming next year, but. With the team that UConn has, they had so many injuries this year. Remember, like, their main point guard, Ozzy Fudd, was out. She tore her ACL or an Achilles or something this year. So she was out for the whole year. She's coming back next year. They have three bigs coming back in next year. Is and should UConn be the favorite to win the national championship next year? Or should South Carolina still retain that because they're still such a young team? Um... I mean, I had UConn winning it this year in the women's. I'm not going to lie. Um, really? I did. Early, you have early. South Carolina? No, just because I, I, I like a good upset I thought you story. knew March Madness. <laughs> I like the good upset story. I did have them. I did have uh, them. I had them beating Iowa, and then I had them in the championship game. And, yeah, I had them, I had them beating South Carolina. But I don't know after this year from South Carolina what – what that's going to look like. I don't know. I'm going to say, I'm going to say just UConn put it on the record. You beat South Carolina? I did. I did. Wow. Yeah, but let's put it on record now. I'm going to say. Yo, welcome back to the sports scene for our third segment. Jesse O, Alvin Delve, and Madison Little joining us for this segment. Guys, I just wanted to take a sec, step back, and talk about A, how we're the best broadcast team in the history of humanity. And then number two, I wanted to talk about how we each got into the industry and how we got to know each other through the industry hey. to become this broadcasting team. Madison, you go first. Your entry into the industry and how you ended up meeting us. Go. Okay. Um, I was the morning news anchor in elementary school. Got an early start. Did the Eagle wow, News Network. Going, I didn't think we were going that far back. But listen, okay. it all ties together. It all ties together. Okay. And then the one time I got to talk about sports on there, I played basketball in elementary school. And I got to say my own name. And I thought it was really cool. So then I really liked it. And mm -hmm. I stuck with it. Went TV pro all the way through the end of high school majored in journalism at UCF then so nice. after I graduated worked for a high school sports network which led me to meeting Jesse O and Alvin Delve in the press box of a local high school football game we hung out for about an hour then got rained out and didn't see each other for like a year and a half then we ran into each other at UNF and did some I think it was volleyball it was volleyball volleyball and now You're here correct. we are best broadcast team in the country yeah um, I remember the first time you handed uh, me like your, these are my hits and everything. And you were like, these are the points I want to touch on. You were like hella serious about it too. And I was like, I was nervous. Let's just have some fun. Like let's breathe. It's going to be a great time. And you were like, oh, okay. And then I was like, yeah, like 
dude, we got this. And then well, I was fresh out of fresh out of college, hadn't worked yeah. in the industry at all. And then I walked into a press box with two people I didn't know for the first time. So I was a little nervy, but now I'm definitely not nervous when I work with you and Alvin. <laughs> okay, good. I'm, I'm glad we figured it out. Side note, does anybody here see Alvin? He's gone. I told you he's fired. <laughs> I have the bro, power. The Did look. you banish him? <laughs> I think he's banished, bro. In all worlds. The Shadow Realm for Alvin. Hey, there's only there's always so much talent who can be and someone had to get cut. The the least talented person, see ya. We don't have the we don't have the money. We don't have the money to pay all these people. And so God knows that when I'm on, he's out. See ya. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Whatever, no, this, whoever created this moment, whoever <laughs> ordained this, insane. You can't, we can't write this stuff. Seriously. <laughs> no, that's 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 going in the show. You know, they say every you, every day you should laugh until you cry. I just did. <laughs> I just can't get over your look, Max. Can uh, you explain the hat and sunglasses? No, this is how Max looks every. Yeah, actually, Max explained. Actually, yeah, Max, how did you get into broadcasting? We're putting this on air. It's called the sports team with Jesse O for a reason. Um, so I got it in with him. Um, you know, it was, we were doing pretty often, um, you know, not regular episodes, but I know I was probably guest number one or something. Um, and we hopped on and just kept on going. And funny enough, it was always one of my dreams, not my number one dream to be a sports broadcaster, but as a kid, I was like, Hey, this would be really fun to do in the future. Never really scratched that itch. Jesse gave me that chance, did some football stuff at one point called a great game. I was nervous as crap. And, you know, it'd be fun to do something like that again. And this is just something to do with your boys and talk about sports and just call Alvin dumb because his technology can't work either. Whatever he's trying is just not going to work. So, okay. and, it's, 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 and that's just going to happen. Well, Madison, I'm going to give you a story of how Alvin and I met um, and how we got into the broadcasting industry because I used to live with a girl on the volleyball team. She will go unnamed right now, but I used to live with a girl on the volleyball team here at UCF. And Alvin happened to be dating said volleyball player. He comes in one day, very late at night. We all know what he was doing, but he comes in really late at night and he says, what's up? And I have like a sports game on or something because, you know, the Golden State Warriors play at like 10 p.m. Um, Eastern time every week. So I have the Warriors game on. He's like, oh, like your basketball guy. I'm like, yeah. And then me and him sat down at like 1030 and we talked till seven in the morning about not even sports, but about life. And it was at this point in time that I was like calling basketball. For and like coming from them too, they ain't talking about much. And, yeah. and the fact that they talked till seven is crazy. That's crazy to me. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Max, That's who invited you? Really <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> Wait, you tell me it's 10. I show up on time. Yeah, that's I true. show up on time and looking good too, might I say, mighty dapper. Anyways, let me finish my story. So Alvin and I were obviously, as Max says, saying nothing to each other till seven in the morning. There wasn't much substance there, but we were talking together. And then I was working for um, a minor league basketball league at that point, and I was calling their games, and I was like, but I was doing them solo. And so I told Alvin, "Hey, you like basketball? Come do one of these games with me." And so we did. And then we would end up doing like, you know, four games in a day. So that's kind of how we got, you know, our flow down and everything. He learned real quick. OK, don't step on my toes in the big moments. I'm going to give you time to talk. Obviously, you know, in between possessions and whatnot, like you're going to have your time. And he learned, you know, OK, a big moment's going to happen. Jesse's going to want to call it. Let the crowd kind of do its thing. And then bang. And we just got our flow from there. And then Alvin, I was telling Madison, the story of how we met. You're finally back um, with it's the really land of cute, the living. Alvin. Al Max <laughs> allowed you to come back from the shadow realm. The shadow realm? Yeah. yeah. I can't see any too. of you, but it's all right. As long as you can see oh, me, I can hear geez. all of you. <laughs> no, no, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Wait, are we are we still going? We're recording right now? Yeah. Oh, we've been recording. Perfect. Come on. Be a professional about this. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Be a dang I professional like for Actually, once. I don't, I don't want to hear it. All right. All right, so audience has a question here. No, no, no audience has a question. What's the audience? Right. What is audience? What, what the audience? it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the audience. Okay, Let's okay. Surprise okay. audience. <laughs> All right. So, Hi. what was what was y'all's favorite like key moment together? Because I know you guys have called a couple of games before. Do so oh. you guys have like a specific moment where you're just like you guys just all hit that note like Beethoven? 
you know, game moment or a specific game? I would probably that was your favorite to call together. I'd probably off rip top ahead. I would go back to NBA when we, we were calling oh. games. This comes in like, like halfway through the game. This guy's like six ten, skill like literally kept Kevin Durant. He comes in super skilled, comes in halfway, and then we call probably the craziest play we've I've ever seen to that moment. Brandon gets a block, crosses everyone over, dunks on everyone. And then Jesse goes crazy. I was able to carry it. And it was like in that moment, and it was early on for me specifically. It was early on in my broadcasting career. So then when we had that moment, I was like, oh, this, this could be something we could do for real. Like this was, it was a clean play. And because of the height of that moment and for us to cap it, how we capped it, I was like, this is, this is, this is going, this is our goal moment for sure. Madison, I think you'll like this one. My favorite moment is not actually on air with these two. And this is a story for Madison and Alvin. So um, my, in my fit, well, it's, it's making fun of myself because it's something that happened to me that everyone then laughed about. So um, <laughs> Alvin and Madison, we all go up to this game together at University of North Florida. We're going to call a basketball game. We're all dressed to the teeth. Like we're looking mighty dapper like you, Max, right now. And they give us pregame sandwiches. <laughs> and so pregame, we go into this pregame uh, classroom, conference essentially, room, conference yeah. room, yeah. And we get our sandwiches and, you know, everyone else can eat sandwiches very plain. Like Madison, Alvin, they're plain sandwich people. They don't like any sauce. Like I'm all about the sauce. So um, I go and get some mustard and then I put the mustard on my sandwich and then I get some mayonnaise. The mayonnaise packet I'm not able to open with my hand. So I'm like, okay. I should open this with my teeth. Moral of the story, long story short, is this entire packet of mayonnaise squirted all over my face, all over my body, and uh, I had to go call a game in 30 minutes after that. So it's in my hair. It's in my face. It's a very visual thing, Max. Like mayonnaise on the face, in the hair, like above your lip and everything. It's not a great look. Specifically, you took, you took the mayonnaise is an instrument a little too seriously on that one. I will say. <laughs> yeah, I know. That well, wild. that's what it looked like. So that is that is my favorite um, experience altogether. Madison, was Let that your me, favorite? That was up there, but okay. I think it was the same day or the same weekend. I drove up with the three of us. Remember? Yes. The one time I drove. Yeah. Um. And on the way home, you guys were like, let me get ox. And I said, no, let me show you guys the ox. And you guys were all underestimating me. Do you remember? Yeah, yes. because we were like, your music's going to suck. You thought I was going to throw on some Taylor Swift or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I was like, this girl's for sure going to go with Morgan Wallen first song. No, I put it in throwback album, my personal throwback playlist. I had the Jaw Rule. I had Little Wayne. Yeah, and that we was had wild. A she did. Full blown she did. two hour <laughs> jam sesh. And I just like the fact that I was able to surprise both of you, and you will never, ever underestimate me ever again. No, I will. But like, I just was like, wow, looking at you, I would not think first song Ja Rule or like no. Big E. I would be. That was, was Nelly like, in there. Okay. Yeah, that there was is Nelly. wild. Some Akon. Yo, know, she went. She was in her bag. I won't lie to you. Yeah. I had zero yeah. faith. I had zero faith. Zero. Anyways, Madison, give a little plug to the next couple shows you're doing and your next broadcast. Well, I'm about to leave. I should have left 15 minutes ago. Oh um, yeah, sorry. To go to it's okay. I'm gonna go up to UNF. I'm doing a baseball game. Um, I'm sideline, and then I have a couple more things. But the one I'm most excited about, April 26th, UNF. Stetson baseball with Jesse O and Alvin Delvey. I'm excited yes. about that one, yeah. Jesse. You're driving. I guess I'm driving. Sure. Yeah. Because because we like I my car the most. in March Madness. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> All so right. I like one, bro. Like it wasn't even like a massive a win's victory. A win. All right, a you win's can take a the win. moral victories. I'm gonna get you every year after this. You will never beat me again. Madison Little, ESPN's favorite sideline reporter. Thank you so much for joining the sports scene. We'll see you soon. Okay, welcome back to the sports scene, everyone, for our final segment. 
And in the spirit of what we saw last week, Max versus Alvin pitted against each other to try to figure out whose college mascots were from which specific colleges. We're gonna go with the same sort of concept of Max versus Alvin, but this one, it's a lot more straight away. This one is called, you got this Max? It's trivia time, baby. We're doing trivia on the show today. Max versus Alvin. There's five rounds, gentlemen. We're going to tally who gets the most at the end. Max, you failed miserably last week. You are going to start us off. Round one. That's your first picture. What is that? What sport is this? Ten seconds on the clock. All right, count me down. Ten, nine, eight. You know what it is, seven. You're just going to make me count? Six, five, I hate you. Four, three, two, one. That's golf. Oh, okay, good. I thought you were going to say golf. All right. Alvin, second one's for you. What is that? Uh, looks like gymnastics. That is correct. Point for Alvin. Max, what is that? Oh, uh, this one's tough. Oh, 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 tennis. That's a great guess. But no, it is incorrect. Alvin. I have no idea. I want to say volleyball. Also incorrect. That one definitely was a hard one to get. All right, Max. It's just soccer. Not correct. Alvin. Uh, let's go handball. That is actually handball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Smaller net. Yep. Alvin. I see a big old R. Let's go rugby. It is rugby. You are correct. Mm. The R literally meant round one, but sure. Max. Billiards. Incorrect. <laughs> Alvin. Yeah, I actually have no idea. Let's go uh, Let's go curling. Also incorrect. <laughs> Both of you were wrong on that one. All right, Max. Yeah, that's just discus. It is cr- discus. You are correct. Trailing by one. Alvin. You have the toes one. Of course you have no toes. You gave him yeah. the toes. <laughs> Call me Steph Curry, baby. Got him. Got him. Alvin, here, it man. is, well, okay, gymnastics, or what'd Sport, you say? Though, ballet? B- ballet is a form of what? Dance. Yeah, that is correct. It is dance. He, he, that should be a half point. Okay, we'll give Alvin half point. point. That's half point. That's not a full point. Well, you skipped my turn. All right, anyways. Max. That's, that's, that's full point. You got two turns on my one. Mate, you saw them toes. <laughs> you want to talk about the full point? Listen, I have to keep the camera up. You, um, you know. Yeah, keep the camera up. Don't show us that full point, mate. I was trying to help you out here by telling you to take <laughs> out, but you want the full. Um, I actually have zero idea. Uh, I mean, I just have to say soccer. I know it's not, but soccer. It is not soccer, unfortunately. Alvin. It's still basketball. I know it's not, but that's the only thing I think of. That's hold the ball. Basketball? Are you insane? No, it is not basketball. Did he just All say right. soccer for that? Oh well, yeah, maybe they're throwing it in. Well, well soccer is that soccer that looks more like a soccer ball than a yeah basketball. But I, I obviously I, I knew it wasn't soccer though. Yeah. Alvin, I guess it's a baseball. It is in fact technically baseball. But Max, I'll give you a chance to steal. This is another sport that actually uses this ball. What? Yeah, there's another sport. Who uses the baseball curious. besides I'm, baseball? I'm curious. I'm curious if you've ever heard of this sport. Pickleball. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Oh, we'll not, you, not the not the new we'll age so, pickleball. We'll, so after the first round, it's Alvin five. Max has two, or Alvin has, I guess, four and a half. If we're playing by Max's no, rules, no, we got so, we got five, baby. Round two. Yeah, he has a full point in this word. Pants. Round two. Unscramble the word, Max. We're starting with you. Ten seconds on the clock. What word is that, bro? <laughs> oh, bro, this is crazy. Five. This. Four, come on, three, two, one. Swimming, swimming, yes, swimming, yes, swimming, yes, swimming, swimming, yes. swimming. Okay, yes. Let's go. It is swimming, it is swimming. <laughs> Let's go. A point for Max. Alvin, 10 seconds on the clock. What word is that? Rugby. Correct. It is rugby. Alvin, six, Max, three. Max, 10 seconds on the clock. What word is that? Five, it's, it's, four, yeah, it's basketball. three. Yeah, that is correct. There you go, Max. You're making a catch up here. You got four points. Alvin, 10 seconds. What is that? Go. Yep. There you go. Can I, Are we giving Alvin like like a third grade test here? Like, what is this? All right, Max. 10 seconds on the clock. You got it. Football. Three. Yep. Nice. Alvin. Go tennis. It is tennis. Max. Hockey. 
Yeah. Dang. Dang, that was fast. Good for you, Max. Yeah. Alvin. Two. Three, two, one. All right, Max. Chance to steal. I'm not going to say. Ten seconds. It's not a sport. I'm okay. not taking the point. No, but you know what it is? Listen, you, it's not a sport. Are you Whatever sure? that is right there is not a sport. Yeah. What? What is it? Do you know? Have you unscrambled it? Yes or no? Just say it. Yep. No. I'm not saying it. I plead you the fifth. You just are going to refuse to say it? I'm, ta- I'm taking the Shohei Itani route. I plead the fifth. <laughs> I don't want the point. It is, in fact, cheer. Which Max oh, is see, Alvin, Alvin's okay. right. We both, we, we, listen, we see that, we don't see a sport. <laughs> okay, wow. You just offended the whole I world. Love Actually, all my when I was flying back to okay. Orlando, I saw a whole cheer competition like coming in. Um, Cheer's cool. Max, Not you got to get this one. Boxing. Duh. Yep. Alvin, final one is for you. 10 seconds. Gymnastics. Yes. All right, Alvin's at nine. Max, you're at seven. Alvin. First question is for you. This was on the sports scene. I asked this question at some point. Alvin, how many dimples does the average golf ball have? 250. No, incorrect. Max, a chance to steal. 69. Great guess. No. Um, The answer was 336. Mm. How many minutes of total action are there in a baseball game? This was 157. No. Incorrect. Total action, actual action on average. Alvin. Oh, total action. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was thinking about the game time. Yeah, no, no, no. How many minutes of total action are there in baseball? 15. 115, also incorrect, mm-hmm. Max, but now that you understand that. 14 minutes. Oh, I kind of want to give it to you because you're close. It is actually 18 minutes. Oh, no, that, that, that's no. not close enough. If no. I was one, if I was a minute away, yeah, if you were 17 different. or 19, I would have actually gave yeah. it to you, but you're both incorrect. Okay, Alvin. Next one's for you. How old was Tiger Woods when he first won the Masters? Oh, let's, let's just say 21. He was 21. You are correct, sir. Oh, yeah. Max, how long is a marathon? 26.2. What's the unit of measurement? Come on. We're in America. We know what it is. 26.2. All right, 26.2. 26.2 miles. Okay, fine. I'll 26.2 give you that one American. For being difficult. All right. <laughs> Alvin, how many seasons did Michael Jordan play with the Bulls? Let's go 13 seasons. He I'm did so play 13 seasons. Okay, but... Max, what year did the players in the MLB go on strike, resulting in no World Series? 1999. Oh, incorrect. <laughs> what? Incorrect. Oh, oh wait, I a, think I do I, remember now. I, 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 I almost thought you had it there. All right, Alvin, your guess. Let's go, nine, let's go 93. Also incorrect. <laughs> Close to Max, did you know? Is it 97? No, also incorrect. Oh. Gentlemen, it was 1994. Oh, come on. You were both no. so close. No. So close. That Alvin. was that, that one you had to hit on the nose. <laughs> yeah, that one you had to get on the money. We'll, we'll take the point. <laughs> yeah, right, I was so off. If it was off by 60 seconds, not 365 days. Yeah, see ya. All right, here we go. Round four, general. And Max, we're going to start with you. Crawl, backstroke, and butterfly are different methods in which sport? I've never heard of the crawl, but I'm just going to have to go swimming. That is true. Crawl. It's a freestyle. It's another way of saying freestyle. Alvin, what sporting event is held every year on Memorial Day? For Let's do baseball. Actually, sometimes there's no baseball games on Memorial Day. Max? I mean, it's not technically wrong. Yeah. I, I think you're meaning like a specific sport there that is an actual it's specific. It's known for Memorial Day. Yes. Like yeah, yeah, is, yeah. And it is. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. So I'm just going to throw a shot what? in the dark. <laughs> I'm just going to say horse racing. I got one. I got no. Incorrect. Let's All right, go. Alvin, what's your guess? NBA. No, like it's a very specific event. Bro, you suck. <laughs> it's like a, he just said two broad sports. Like, yeah, <laughs> like just hoping the broad it was sports. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 I should go minus one point for that because that was just whack. <laughs> No, gentlemen, the, the sport that is held every year on Memorial Day is the Indianapolis 500. Oh, race that is, I would, I would, yeah, that, is, that, that is Memorial Day's sport. Max, yeah. what sport did bank robber John Dillinger play? Maybe I'm totally wrong, but there's no way there's a guy named John Dillinger who's hooping in the NBA, no. so that's off. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so that's <laughs> off. No one's named that, and they're, and they're wet, so that's not, that's not possible. Okay. He, this guy, John Dillinger, he's not a big boy. 
Like I'm saying he's like six one, six two at best. Probably like five seven. So not football. That's out of here. Wait, you said six uh, one, six two at best, probably five seven, okay. I mean yeah, you gotta cast a wide net. Um so not football. Um so it really leaves baseball or tennis in my eyes. And so I'm gonna go with tennis. Incorrect. Mm. Oh Alvin. I'm your just guess. gonna follow Max's logic and let's just hit baseball. That is correct. Hey, <laughs> I'll take the fifty fifty play. Dang. <laughs> yeah. My, Alvin literally half had a point. no we'll idea until you said half baseball a point. Tennis. Half a point. Yeah. We both get half, bro. I, I can't, half I can't just point? leave my dog out like Max, that. Max, do you yeah, accept? Yeah, half a point for each, bro. I'll take half, half a point. Yeah, okay, man, okay. Come on, dog. Because it, it's the end of Ramadan. I'll, ta- I'll, take gener- I'll, I'll take the generosity. Alvin, the Triple Crown includes uh, what three horse races? <laughs> you got to know this because you're in the horse racing world now. Um, yep. seen, uh, that's uh, not a... Race. <laughs> the Goldstream yeah. Park is a place. It's not a race. <laughs> that was. Oh no. There. The races are done there. And the Pegasus World Cup. All right. I'm just going to stop you there because you're already so incorrect. Because actually, none of the races there are in the Triple Crown. Max, your guess. Pass. We'll give you, we'll give you, Alan, we might give, we'll give you one point. Max, if you can guess the other two, because he got Kentucky Derby, right? Obviously, Kentucky Derby's in the Triple Crown. Yeah, I ain't hitting any of this. You're not? Oh, yeah. You could get two not, points not, on this one and not get Not this moment. My, my brain ain't working on this one. <laughs> okay, like gentlemen, come on. Fired, we're, we're, our main sponsor is First Bet. You got to know these. It's the number one horse wagering app in the entire world, but it's the Kentucky Derby. It's the Preakness Stakes. Which is held in Baltimore, Maryland, and the Belmont Stakes, which is held in New York. Now you guys know. Max, name three sports that use a bat. So baseball. One point. Yep. Cricket. Yep. You're one point behind Alvin do. now. This is where you could come back. What other sport? What? <laughs> oh, is it not? It's a stick. Mm. Alvin, you got one oh, more. No idea. Apparently, in. Table tennis. They use bats. Hmm. I learned something new. You know? Now we all know something new. Anyways, Max, now you're only trailing behind Alvin. Yeah, well, another name for the paddle in table tennis is a bat, actually, is what I learned when I was doing this. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. I mean, Yeah, there's no way we're going to get that one. Yeah, no. Okay. Anyways, Alvin, next one's for you. What is the oldest existing NFL franchise? Let's go... Cowboys. The Cowboys. No, correct. Max, do you have an idea? I really want to say the Green Bay Packers, but I don't know if it's oh, them. Oh, Max, you freaking got it, bro. <laughs> oh, that's wow. Cool. Oh, my All goodness. Right, well, All right. Well, you guys are tied. I, was, I had another one in my mind, but I'll take yeah, it. I'll, t- I'll take the points. The gun. Okay. All right. You know what, Max? You jumped the gun on me, cooking. but I'll take it. Final round. Here we go. There can only be one winner. All right, Max, what colors are the Olympic rings? Okay. So it's red. Yep. And this one you have to get fully correct. It's not individual yep. points per color. Yellow. Yep. Green. Yeah. Blue. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Black. Yes. Dang, you got on the board. Yes, yes. Uh, every four years, but it's staggered, so we get it every two years. It's not mistaken. You are. That was a great, great, great answer. One that Max can't even argue with. That is correct, Alvin. You got it. Max, in which country are the Olympics being held this year? Paris. That is incorrect. France. Because Paris is not a country. Yes, okay, France, France, France. Okay. But okay. it's a Paris Olympics, though. Okay. Is it we'll not? Maybe that one. It is the Paris Olympics, yeah. But yeah, I was saying, there you go. in which country? Alvin, how many events are in a heptathlon? I five. That is incorrect. Max, a chance to steal. No. That's oh. a hex. Athlon. A hept athlon is seven. Oh, is you it? Both got that incorrect. Yep. So there is hope. Max, final questions for you. Whoever gets this right wins. Which city has hosted the most Olympic Games? Dang. This one's tough. Not country. City. Yeah. Which city has yeah. hosted the most Olympic Games? All right. I'm, I'm in between two. 
I wish I had a coin so I can flip. And you're not going to say them out loud so Alvin can't guess the other one? Yeah. <laughs> it's just uh, L.A. Incorrect. No. Yeah. Unfortunate. Alvin, your guess. Let's go Paris. Also incorrect. Both those would have been incorrect, by the way. Gentlemen, the correct answer was London. Oh, that was the next one. That was the other one? Uh, yeah. Uh, that was still fun, though. And actually, Max, technically, you did win by half a point. So let's go. Well, we'll give Bang. you this one by half of a point. Alvin, you'll take it next time. But hey, thank you, Madison. Thank you, Alvin and Max. Someday you will win by more than half a point. And thank you all for tuning in today to the show on iHeartRadio, iHeartRadio Podcast, and YouTube. You want a little more sports madness in your life? We'll tune back in on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Subscribe to us on Showtown Hoops on YouTube. And please rate, comment, and download the show everywhere else. Next week, we'll be back with a lot more sports talk, so stay tuned. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and we'll see you right back here on the sports scene with Jesse L. Presented by First Bet and Sports Fluent Media.